It's exactly 14 minutes past uh, one. Another Tuesday afternoon. You're welcome to the Executive Lounge with me, Inshira Ado. And uh, what day is it today? See, I've been so confused uh, with all the holidays. It's Tuesday, but it's the 7th of May. Uh, for a moment, I thought it was the 6th of May. Um, this year has been quick. Uh, I don't think Usain Bolt has anything on this one. Uh, so in a moment, I'm going to be introducing my uh, guest for today. And um, there's quite a lot of interesting stuff happening around us. Um, a recent survey um, or report um, has indicated that the entertainment industry in Ghana uh, could hit a billion dollars or across the sub-region. And the um, question is, if the slice or the pie is getting bigger, um, wouldn't we want a slice? And how much of that pie do we want? How much of the work required to get a decent slice of that pie are we already doing or need to do to ensure that we're getting a generous helping of that uh, entertainment industry kick? So, um, my guest today is um, a Jamaican. Um, and uh, she has quite a lot of experience, um, more than two decades of experience. She's an international award-winning uh, artistic director, cultural ambassador, and uh, founder of Rockers Jamaica and the Dance All United Nations. Uh, so much to learn about her, so much to glean from her experiences across uh, the world. Uh, she's, um, we'll go through her repertoire of achievements in a moment but more importantly we will get an understanding of what it takes to produce world-class entertainment and so that we're able to tap into that um, market and uh, get a piece of that action so time check again is 16 minutes past uh, one this is the executive lounge if you have questions or uh, thoughts you want to share please uh, send them to us by whatsapp on 0244 Three four zero four three seven. My guest is Donna Ray Rock. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. You're welcome. And, Thank uh, you. Welcome to Accra, Ghana. Is this your first time in uh, in Ghana? Yes, it's my first time in Africa, but it's my first country in Africa, which is Ghana. Your first, not your first time. My first, your first time country in Africa. In Africa. Okay. Yes. So. Ah, and right. you're, okay. Why so did here. you choose to come to Ghana? Well, I. I originally chose Ghana because I was studying the markets outside of, of course, Jamaica and the United States in regards to culture, music, dance. Mm -hmm. And um, considering that Ghana had most of, I mean, like Stonewall, Shatawali was the two most popular one that we know from Jamaica in regards to dan <laughs> dance or culture. Yeah. So I just chose Ghana because okay. the culture, it was here, it's our people. That's why I choose Ghana. Okay, well, you're welcome. Thank you. Now, um, let, let's jump into a little bit of who you are. Uh, of course, uh, Jamaican. Um, yes, I'm a Jamaican. Yeah. Internationally uh, claimed to as well. I'm also based in the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been in the United States for over maybe 20 years. And I've been going back and forth to Jamaica in regards to, of course, culture exchange. I've been in the industry doing theatre productions. Mm -hmm and also development of artists. And from there, I went into producing and, and doing shows and um, you know, bringing across Jamaica culture in other countries. So you've, you've sort of done the behind the scenes stuff. You've um, developed talent, you've pushed culture. Right. You're an ambassador, you're an advocate. There you go. Um, and, and so you've pretty much straddled the spectrum in terms of doing entertainment from an advocacy point of view. Right. which is not usually profit-making, right. to the commercial end of the entertainment uh, business, right? Right. Good. So there's a lot to learn from It's you. a lot, yes. Okay. Um, you've, you've curated a number of, um, can I call them festivals, or like annual events, um, yeah. both across uh, Jamaica and, 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 and Europe? Europe, yes, 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 yes. I mean, we, we considering that the culture um, is very heavy in, um, in Europe, a lot of festivals actually is hosting in um, in Europe in regards to dance hall and reggae music. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest festivals are in Europe, you know, I mean, um, I mean, days in Europe. Mm -hmm. And I we go there to teach workshops 
and of course, you know, to entertain. But when it comes to the market side of it, um, in regards to Africa, um, you know, I think there's a market that is wide open that needs to be developed in a way that it can um, be lucrative in, in essence, just like how Europe is, because Europe is making millions or billions of dollars off of reggae music and the culture. Wow. Yes. I think uh, coming here and seeing what I see um, is not tapping to not even a, a bit yet to how it is branded and uh, the full s scope of what dancehall culture is, of what they're embodying in regards mm -hmm. to entertainment. Um, I think uh, we have to, in Ghana here, we have to tap into that whole culture part yeah. of it. You know, we just, I see that they're just doing shows and concerts and concerts, but the full culture of it is, is not there. Okay, so we, we're only just scratching the surface right. as far as you're concerned. Yes, yes. Um, what, what would you say are some of the things that the, is being done with the dance or culture in, say, Europe and in Jamaica? Because you've got quite a number of uh, big uh, festivals. You know, you've got Sumfest. Right. Um, uh, Rebel Salute. Rebel Salute. Right. Um, I'm trying to remember, there's another one. Rebel Salute, Sunfest um, is a too popular one right now that has been running. I mean, uh, the other big ones, though, those are single days. Okay. Like these, are, these, are, these are festivals. These that, are festivals. Right. Sound the Alarm just started. That's an Abamar concert. It's mm -hmm. just started like three years ago. And he's doing extremely well with Sound the Alarm. Mm -hmm. He's actually hosting that in, um, in Linstead okay. in, in Jamaica. Okay. And it's really doing well. Okay. And that's a two-day event. You've looked at several markets, and you think Ghana has potential. Um, you think that what we've done so far is a step in the right direction, but just scratching the surface barely. Right. What have you seen as the missing link here, or what are the others doing in the other markets that, that you think that we're not doing? You mentioned branding, for example. Yes, I mean, because branding goes a long way. In, in, I mean, from the international standpoint of, you know, the United States, it goes very a long way. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what, we, what we're not doing here is somebody like, say, myself, that, that is tapping into the market here in a new country, new gr stamping ground. Um, the expertise of what I know in regards to dancehall culture, reggae culture, or just being a Jamaican, period, um, there's a lot, lot, lots that I could offer. Um, a Jamaican can offer that is that it is in that industry in regards to a package of festival or a show or shows mm -hmm. and to um, the whole feel of what the feel should look like what the experience should be like mm -hmm. you know so coming into an event a reggae event is not just the artists when you go to Europe they're not just presenting you the artists they're presenting you Everything, the food, right? The merchandising, you know what I mean? They're presenting you a lot of different things. The dancing, and then the dancing is it's, it's not, it's not here at all. The dancers are here. Afrobeat dancers are here. And they, there's also some dancehall dancers mm -hmm. that are here. There's a lot of dancehall dancers, actually, in around Africa that right. I know. You know what I mean? But I think they're, the platforms that they're having here, they leave out the other part of the culture. The mm -hmm. dancing is a very important part also as well in regards to the entertainment part of it. So there's a lot of parts of the, that is missing that could, you know, you can build on in regards to having a full cultural experience. So the experience is critical um, if we're going to really maximize the opportunities that are out there for us. So you mentioned that uh, the experience should make up, um, should have, not just the artists, right. but um, that the food, the culture. Right. Um, so there has to be a number of things that are sitting around the show. So the show is central. Right. And then the food, the merchandising, the cultural, um, you know, elements, trying to cultural understand elements. all of those things are sitting all around right. the show. And, I mean, in aspect of dancehall culture, let's say dancehall culture, because that is my expert area, because, mm -hmm. you know, um, you have the song clash system. Yes. You have that part of the culture that is huge in Jamaica, and it's huge actually in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, like, for instance, here, I'm like, what about the songs? I said, let's do a song clutch monthly, weekly, or something that is so big. I mean, they're doing World Cup with, with song systems mm -hmm. across Europe, and um, Africa is not involved. I mean, you know, lie. They have one African song that came to, Jam came to New York um, last mm -hmm. year, and actually he won. Wow. Yes, it's an African song. One, it named 
oh, I'm so tired the name of it. But um, he, they won. Um, so my thing is, I come here and they say, well, oh, Ghanaians don't like this. The Ghanaians not doing this. Ghanaians are too this and Ghanaians are too that. And they try to find all these excuses to not give the people them what they should give the people. They're assuming, okay, they just only like white rice, and that's it. You never try something else and give it to them and say, okay, package it nicely, add the proper seasoning and spices in there so it could taste good, and give it to the people. So, so, so there's a certain aver a risk aversion on the part of the people who should be providing alternatives to them. Absolutely. Let me take you back to uh, and 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 when you started saying this, my mind just went to the skits on. Um, Sean Paul's album Dutty Rock mm -hmm. and, and, and in one of these skits it sounds like uh, an um, an uptight you know man telling uh, a younger right. uh, man that you're not going to take me to a dance or event I don't want to go to a dance or event and I don't want to be a part of you know all the do you feel that maybe um, there's a certain stereotype that dance hall needs to to fight all right so this is where I come in and that's what I've been advocating for for years, mm -hmm. um, is to bring out the attractiveness of our culture, um, to paint this beautiful picture. That's what it is. Now, you have, there's good and bad when it comes to dance hall, but maybe there's not even a bad. I think the bad, I would call it a rebellious state for our people. The history of Jamaicans and where we come from and our experience as Africans and where we are now in Jamaica in regards to what how we are in from within mm -hmm. we are a rebellion type of people we are very aggressive we are very we are fight back we we are those kind of people and the, the, the activities in dance hall within the dance hall space shows you that people are really rebelling mm -hmm. now if you don't understand it from that perspective view of where we come from um the the the, the negative experience that we had over slavery and all these things um it is still strongly in jamaicans if you go to jamaica jamaica right now you will see that the aggression and the, the that that's that fighting rebellion thing is is strongly in our people in jamaica they don't take no check that is that's what jamaicans are and so they they put that into the dance hall so the dance hall space is a, is a space where they freely express now the that spirit of defiance yes now, the negativity or the stereotype that comes with it is just the stories that is actually really happening to these people. What, when you hear a vice cartel, a uh, movado, sing a, a song, it is actually what is really happening. Okay. These are things that is really happening to us. So now, those are the stories. That's what dance hall is. Dance hall is your story of your life or what's happening in the streets. You understand? So now it's the only thing that the negativity is is maximized so, so much there, you know, the people then from outside who doesn't understand the depth of our culture or depth of our people as Africans, then they, they would see of like, no, I'm not going to dance all, I'm not going to dance all, or they would say dance all has this negative negative stereotype, right. but it do have a negative stereotype. No, but if, if, if dance all is uh, an expression of the spirit of defiance by the Jamaicans, um, because of slavery and oppression, right? Um, where does that? Ha, how? Where's the reflection on the African uh, society beyond solidarity with the Jamaicans? That is what needs to happen. Now we need to bridge that gap. There's a big gap that needs to bridge. I mean, I'm here in Ghana for a few months, and I realize that. I realize that there's so much that the Africans are, the Africans, I, I'm not going to say Ghanaians, because mm -hmm. when you say Ghanaian, to separate them from who are Nigerians, who come from Ethiopia, you know, so when we say Africans, it, it, it entails all of us, right? Mm -hmm. So th the bridging of the gap of us coming together, Africans coming back together, either outside of diaspora or inside, it is what it is that's going to facilitate all of this um you know, uh, not understanding, and that is actually where we come in in regards to having people really understand the core of the culture and have it to be more appreciative in regards to how they see it, what the, what their perceptions are, what that of what dance hall is. You know what I mean? I mean, I've done the World Reggae Music Awards a few, a few times. Mm -hmm. I'm a part of the nominating committee for the World Reggae Music Awards. Right. And every year for since I was in theater as a choreographer. I, I always put on this 
this beautiful symphony of dancehall and it, it blows them away every year and that is straight dancehall mm. you just take out the little pieces look at beyonce beyonce is doing dancehall this is how she dress you saw she move mm -hmm. but it's just the way she's doing it but the jamaicans they go raw they don't package it and that's where we come in we have to package our culture mm. it has to be packaged do you do you think that um what we have would you call the culture you have here a dance or culture or you know no absolutely not okay there's there's no dance or culture in ghana right no i i don't see it i don't and if it's there i don't feel it I, there's no dance or culture at all in ghana there's other parts of the world where I go and I see dance hall culture. Okay, what do you see there that you don't see here? All right. First of all, I realized that even just going out to party or just to hang out at these spots, um, the music that you're playing is like five decades behind. They don't. There's not. They're not current on the music. They don't know the current stars that are big and huge in the United States with Jamaican dance hall artists. They don't know them. They don't know the music. They're like ten years behind. You understand? So with the music mm. comes everything and the current to keep current. Because, mm. you know, you see how the world is moving. Everything is fast right now. Everything is Internet. Everything is social media. Everything is that. So my thing is that Ghana, if you get on it, ban Ghana and just jump on it and just let's go. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is Ghana needs to get on the right now, please and jump on it and then we can fly away. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Okay. Listen, it's really big. Look, it's, 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 it's really a big, a big uh, market. If, if you look, if you, if you were to say, so I had in this our um, utopia, Mm -hmm. um, where I had full control of this space called Ghana. And I said, Donna Ray, <laughs> I need you to make dancehall big in Ghana. Right. Um, but minding that we don't want the negative stereotype. Right. Okay? Right. How will you go about it? What are the things that you think need to happen? Mind you, it wouldn't be anything negative in Ghana because Ghanans don't know how to act that thing out. Are you sure? I have not seen no they're trying if they are, but they're <laughs> not they they don't know how to act that. Because okay. that, that negative thing is from the people in Jamaica who are warriors. Jamaicans are the fighters. Mm. That's our history. Yeah. So you won't get that. In Ghana they're more humble people here. They're more like obedient, I call them mm. here. People. You understand? Jamaicans they don't really follow too much of the rules and certain things. They're just free and say, This is what I do. You understand? And that's how we are gonna do it. That's what dance all is in, re in regards to the people, right? Mm -hmm. So in regards to your question, here it's, it's, we could ignite a whole culture of, uh, a beautiful culture of dance all here, right? With them just starting off with the music and weekly activities or monthly activities in regards to having the people really experience the positive side of dance all. Mm -hmm. I have a whole s selection of music, of dance all music that are from these new trending stars that Ghanans don't know, and all the songs is all positive words. Okay. It's so almost like so, so we can start the positive reinforcement. Absolutely. With the music. With the music. Yes. Um, and then that would what what else follows? The food and then just activities. Activities um, that exposes people more and more. More and more and more, more and more. I, I understand. Can dance all be a force for good? Dance all is a force that is that that is for good. It's not can be. It is. Right. Considering, considering, um, look at Europe, for instance, mm -hmm. right? In Europe, every month, you have over maybe a plane or two planes coming to Jamaica and ships coming to Jamaica with all white people, Caucasian, mm -hmm. <laughs> that are coming to Jamaica just to study dance all. Wow. Every month, you have young from 18 years old to maybe like 34, coming to Jamaica to learn for learn dancing and dance all. They're spending money to come to Jamaica to learn. So that in itself, of it, it is an empowerment tool for young people to find something that they love, and they love it. Okay. You have, yeah. I mean, you talk about the importance of or what you would do in terms of your priority. If right. You, if, if we need to kickstart some kind of a, a renaissance or right. even grow this market and tap into its potential, Right. Uh, we start with the music. Yes. So, of course, we've got Stoneboy, we've got Black Prophet, um, quite a number of um, right. 
influencers. Would you say that these are influencers who have put their foot right in the in the space where they can call themselves dancehall artists and and they can command the global attention um, that that is required? Well, they have the ball in the court, mm -hmm. and these influencers that are eating and feeding and loving and embracing dance all so much. Mm -hmm. It is in their ball court. I mean, Stoneboy go to Jamaica all the time. You understand? Um, Shatter Wally love dance all. Shatter Wally love dance all. So yes, I mean, these are influencers that if they say that they're quote unquote dance all artists or Afrobeat dance all artists, then it is their duty to tap into that part of it that, it that the people them really need to understand. Mm -hmm. It is their duty because now they are ambassadors for, for dance hall culture. Do you think that they are what they do? They, do, 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 do they understand the culture? See, now that, that is a, that's a good question. Now, do they understand the culture? Considering what I'm seeing now, mm. it's a lifestyle. They're doing the music. The lifestyle is a total different thing of it. All them dress, the swag, all of that stuff. You know, I mean, they're close. I mean, shut up while I do him thing. And I'm um, Stoneboy also. I mean, they're all doing, you know, they're all sounding. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty sure that it's because of their native song. They have to also now do Afro dance hall because that's what it is. Afro because dance it's hall is important. There you go. The with your low, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. So, yeah. So I can't leave it up to themselves to do that. We have to get a Jamaican for coming us and do it. <laughs> Which is why you're here? This is why I'm here. But, but Ghana and Jamaica has had a very um, very good and strong uh, collaboration over the years. Yes. Um, this is a very decent Jamaican community here. Right. Um, and that's why I'm surprised that Ghana has not reached where it should have been. It's, I feel like I traveled back into the past or something. When right. I, yeah. So, so would that be... I mean, and, and, and that surprise, when you look into it, what, what does it reveal to you? It reveals that we have this big gap that we need to really close. But, but you've had people come from Jamaica mm -hmm. um, to live here, to mm -hmm. work with Ghanaians. Rita Mali has a right. studio here. Right. I mean, all of these are interventions before your time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What would you do differently? What do you think they didn't do then that, if done now, could make yeah. a positive impact. Yeah, you have to, I mean, that's all is what it is. You have to connect with the people. You have to do grassroots. Grassroots is connecting with the people them. Connect with them face to face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so moving around, meeting a lot more people yes. and uh, yeah. sharing there you go. the culture with them. Absolutely. This is, and this place is huge. I mean, come on. This is, this is it's a big ass country. I mean, Jamaica is, is only 2 million point five, you know, people. Mm. Look how big this place is. Ghana is larger than, than Jamaica. I mean, come but, on. but what you see in Jamaica, you speak one language. Yes, English right. and Patois. English and Patois. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. so there's a certain homogeneity in that regard. Um, here we have several I know. Uh, languages, yeah. you know, um, and different tribes and things I, like that. Right. Do you think that those would, those will create barriers, and, and how do we deal with? With music, there's no barriers. Mm. Music is music. It's just one beat. It's just, a, it's just the one drop beat. And uh, the one drop beat is, is the element of dancehall or reggae music. Without that, it's not it. Just like how you have Afrobeats. Afrobeats is dancehall. That's, what, that's, where, that's, where, uh, that's where Afrobeat came from, dancehall. If anybody don't know what it is, then they need to really go study and understand that Afrobeat is dancehall. It's just little elements of the African fabric is in that rhythm or that beat to make it afro mm -hmm. yes from what we've <laughs> talked about so far my guest is donna ray uh, rock uh, she's uh, an artistic director she's gone from theater choreography to shows she's on the um uh, panel uh for uh, world dance hall awards right yes for the international, international world and reggae music awards that's right and, um, you know, you've advanced some very interesting thoughts about how we can bridge that gap. Right. Um, and, and I see some very interesting uh, spin-offs, mm -hmm. you know. Um, for example, you talked about fashion. Oh, 
that is the biggest thing in dancehall culture right. as a Jamaican. Matter of fact, just Jamaican period. The fashion. Oh my God. We love clothes. We love fashion. We can take this and tear it up next week and paint your sunset. All right, change your suit or something, change. And you see the people them there down in Jamaica, they don't really have a lot of money, but they're, they are like clean. Like fashion is up. It's all the time. Right. So the fashion goes so much. I, I come to Ghana, I'm like, people are not dressing. People are not putting on clothes. They're just, just regular. They're not, they're, not ex, they're not being creative of what they have. And Africans are creative, extremely creative people. The things I see them do, I'm like, how did they do that? How did they do that? Yeah, but it's, so, it's just so, exploring. So in Ghana, what, what have you noticed? Are we, are we, are we boring? Uh, <laughs> 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 are, we, are we boring uh, or uh, we do have what it takes? And I noticed when you were talking about the people you've observed, you, you said that right. you know, um, Chateau Ali is doing his thing. So yes. is it that he has something? That, does he remind you of what a dancehall artist or the culture of dancehall should look like? No, not necessarily. Okay. Some, some of his actions you would never see a dancehall artist would do. Okay. There are certain behaviors that Jamaicans would not do. It. Mm. We can't do it, and it it comes from <laughs> that part of the culture. Okay. There are certain things here that I see men do, and I say, oh, "How they do that?" Mm. I'm like, "Why is it that they're doing that? They're men." And in Jamaica, you would never ever see us do certain things. Like for instance, I realize that men carry this purse here, right? This mm. purse. Yeah. Well, purse thing, like like a purse. Thing. I know what you're talking about. I don't have mine here. So in Jamaica, I'm like, "What that?" <laughs> Are we like? What is that? Okay. <laughs> like, why are they carrying a purse? What is a culture thing? You understand? So it's just say, certain things to understand with the culture as far as, like, it's, it's not a barrier, but it's just a practice. That's what we have practiced. So that's what we have thought. I mean, they teach us that. They teach the men that. And we just adapt to those those principles. And we just, that's what it is. You don't know. So we just, Jamaican, especially the men, they're very, um, every word is serious. The word that you're saying to him, you have to be careful that the word that you're saying to him. Right. They take it that literally serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, it's just certain things that he's doing that I know that Jamaican or dancehall artists, quote unquote, they, they wouldn't do. Right. Yeah. Going back to the fashion. Yeah, and style. What opportunities do you think in, in terms of the culture? So, there's this food, right? Yeah. Okay, of course, we've got uh, a, rest, a few restaurants in Ghana that do Jamaican food. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one aspect. Right. Uh, or one small box we can tick in, in terms of the various things that make up the culture. Right. Fashion. Fashion is a big part. Can you help me appreciate, paint me a, uh, an image of what Jamaican fashion is like and, and why that's so different from what we have here? It's a mixture of pop culture with the, because Jamaicans are influenced on the pop style. Or maybe I'm lying. That is actually our style. Them they, they just take it. <laughs> yeah. But our style is, is just like it's um it's variations of different um tailoring suits. I mean, you know Shabarang started off with this whole Short. linen suit and linen all these things, shorts, shorts and yeah. then you know, the clocks and the the mesh marina, and also for the older foundation man. Mm -hmm. But the trending youths, them nowadays, them just want a nice pants that just fit very close to them body. A nice shirt, you know, design shirt. Just It's not plain shirt. The shirt that has it on, it'll print a particular kind of way. You understand? All them just, you may, you may pop it collar down like this. Oh. Jamaicans may put it up like this. Like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. or they may just broke up this up here, so... You understand? And maybe they would have a little red, green, and gold or something, a leather thing right here in right. the pocket. They would just detail it out. It's really details. It's the same so clothes. So it's just details. And it's there's an details. opportunity for us to tap into this. Yes. It's fashion. It goes a long way, man. You, okay. go, you go into the dance hall. It's really fun. All right. Now, you're painting an image that makes me want to experience the dance hall. Um, so we talked about the culture. There's the foot. Well, the, a part of the culture, there's the... So there's fashion. And then there's... Um, I mean, do you foresee, one of the things that are important, um, do you foresee the fashion aspect of dance or um, creating economic upliftment? Absolutely. I mean, you know, remember, I mean, Africans are creative people. I mean, we are creative people. So it's, you just take what you have and just add elements to it. You're not changing anything about your culture. It's just, just taking it and just adding. 
you know, I mean, the girls are going to dance all with mesh stocking and, you know, the different kind of hairstyles and, you know, the different kind of naked clothes, you know, that women in dance all, they dress a particular kind of way. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a very interesting point, uh, you know, you raise. Um, right, we are <laughs> a little more free with our bodies. I mean, Africans, that's where you come from, Africa. Most parts in Africa, they wear clothes. <laughs> so you know me I say it just appreciate the body yeah, man appreciate the, the, the nice body that the almighty gives you and you just experiment with it you know you, you, you just everybody because me I wouldn't dress a certain way in a dance hall as much as I'm in a dance hall you wouldn't catch me there dead doing certain things in a dance hall right no so there, there should be there should be freedom but there should be bounds absolutely absolutely because then if we don't have any boundaries then it's it's gonna be chaos so, mm. yes, and and I know, and most of these people that are doing the spreading in the negativity of dance hall, and people think that's what dance hall is. Is um, I know those kind of people, and it's mostly it's mostly the dancers in Jamaica that are spreading most of the negativity mm -hmm. actions because they're the one that they're fulfilling what the music is saying. So, they say, gun finger, they must show you the gun finger, you understand, cut off your head, they must cut off your head. So, they, they're showing you all that stuff. Right, some of the girls they jump jump off a ceiling and jump on the floor and they're doing all these crazy things and I'm like, no, that's for stop. So there has to be a distinction between entertainment and, but these people have um, influence. What? They, they have influence. On yes, people. they have very um, much so. And, and so how do how does society guard against um, negativity or the negative elements? That's um, you know not seeping through. That's the reason why we need entities uh, or uh, events that, that could embody and show that. So they will see, this is it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm looking to do. This is it. That is just an act that these people have in their own mindset that you can't control in mind. They're doing that. But there is, is here. Just like when you would have corporate mm -hmm. versus ghetto. If you understand what I say, so the corporate take it now and put on them nice shoes and them nice clothes and you know, and then go out and then the ghetto people them just put on anything and just walk out the street. That's what it is. It's just you just dress it up. You just put on some nice clothes on it and it will looks nice. Yeah. Wow. And um, so, I, I'm trying to, in in your experience, mm -hmm. um, where would you say has been the most difficult place to sort of plant seeds in terms of? do shows oh, man. or, or um, hold a festival. Man, I'm telling you, man, <laughs> my experience here wasn't a good experience. Here? Yeah. You've tried to do something here? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a good experience at all. Um, I, I, it's, I don't know. Uh, America is good, you know, because they're culturally connected deeply. Um, Europe is, is, is very good. They embrace it quickly. Um, even the dance shows and the dance competitions, dance art competitions and stuff in Europe is really huge. And the festivals, you're talking about days of festivals. Rotatom, for instance, that held in, in Spain in, um, in Spain every September. It has eight days of activities and it has over 30, no, 300 and maybe 50,000 people that attend this festival. And wow. it's every day you hear, no matter where you go within that city circumference, it's reggae music and dance all you're hearing every single day. The For eight days. Yes, the people are so much in the music. Man, these people, they embrace our culture much more than we are. And then we complain that they're taking this and they're taking that. And we are the one that is not structuring it and fixing it and then we complain oh they're taking our culture and they're taking that they're not taking anything you're giving them you know we need to stop giving people <laughs> what we what we have created and start uh, packaging it properly and start execution simple so dancehall music has actually influenced quite a lot outside of the of the, the culture right uh, and and it seems as though the real value uh, commercial value is made elsewhere. For example, you mentioned that you know well, the way Beyonce dresses. Yes. That's dancer. I mean, sometimes. Nicki Minaj, yeah, all of yeah. them. Rihanna, all of them. Every single one of them is dancer. Look what they do, so look what they're doing now. Inspired it, all uh, of this, but but it, it sits within the pop culture space. So how do we take back 
the dance hall identity and the culture and build on it and add value? We need to um, structure, put together a structure. I mean, I have put together a structure. That's, mm-hmm. what I've, that's one of my, um, my expertise area mm-hmm. where I put structures together in regards to dance hall um, activities. So the structure and just dress it and just uh, package it. It's, I mean, I learned that from the United States the years I've been there in regards to packaging. And that's what we have lacking as African people, you know, is packaging. Mm-hmm. You know, we we rather to package somebody else, um, you know, somebody else, um, and then we don't package ours, and we have the best thing. That's like it's the same thing with Jamaica. Jamaicans don't like their own thing. Jamaicans will sell that within a second. And then they complain. Then they complain. How do we change that? We just have to put in the. We need a structure in a body, a part of the dance of United Nations. Is that's what we are. So the dance of United Nations is to work with a collective of people within other countries. Mm-hmm. These countries that, that, that is highly driven with dance or reggae culture. And we work together. We go into the countries. That's just like I'm here, myself. Find people like yourself who are, you know, want to see better. And we work together and, and we put those things into play and we execute. So that's how we unite together and bridge that gap, you know, in regards to, you know, I mean, putting that whole you know, culture together in regards to wow. fixing so, it. So uh, we are 10 minutes away from uh, 2 p.m. And uh, so I've been quick. having a chat with uh, Donna Ray Rock, and uh, she's the founder of Rockers uh, Jamaica and um, also uh, the Dance Hall United Nations. So she's created a unique uh, universal platform for dance hall culture. She's an advocate. Uh, and um, she's done a lot of work in the United States, back in the Caribbean, as well as Europe. And uh, she just mentioned that she uh, made a foray into Ghana that uh, didn't start quite well. What do you think went wrong, and what lessons have you learned? <laughs> wow, what went wrong? See, when you go into a new turf, um, as a Jamaican, that uh, Jama- Jamaicans are embraced all over the world. Once you're Jamaican, people just love you. That's that's my experience. And is that largely because of Bob Marley? You know, say. And then Cool Runnings mm, and Usain Bolt. I don't know what those things are. <laughs> if it's the food or how we talk, or maybe it's the patois, maybe the music, but it has to do with some of those, of course, right? It's it's a big part of that, of mm. course, because they spread it far further for us. That's right. Right. So I mean. Um, you know, I mean, in regards to my experience here with what happened, in, in, of course, is they may, they may say that not connecting with the right people. And then, but you're, 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 you're directed towards those people who they say is the right people. Mm-hmm. But then those are not the quote unquote right people, mm-hmm. you know. And um, then you have some people that they say they love dance or they love reggae music. But then at the end of the day, they're still not, they're still in the back being not fighting against it in a sense mm-hmm. um, and there's some of them who are their mind is so closed that they're not really, really ready to open up their you know the mind in regards to getting out of that box that they're used to right, right, yeah right, right. well we're coming to the very end of our conversation it's two minutes to the top but well, sorry it's eight to the top of the hour and um, I always end the show with one um, song that I will choose for you. Uh, it's <laughs> my favorite um, all-time uh, reggae artist. Who's that? And I will be playing you a song <laughs> from him in a moment. Who's that? Um, I can't tell you just yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what are your final thoughts on um, if anybody wants to to venture out and push the culture, the entertainment? culture and tap into this space be it dance or reggae or afrobeat what do you think two things you think that they ought to take with them no matter where they go uh, the attitude is, is very important um, and of course the um, the fabric which is that uniqueness of where it comes from the, the 90s that, mm-hmm. that that element you have to take those. Once you have the attitude and um, and the fabric, then 
then that's there you go. You have you have what it takes to to do that because then that's the that's everything that you have right there. Right. Right. The blueprint of it of the culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, finally, um, one lesson that you've learned. One lesson. Mm -hmm. One lesson. In Ghana. Mm -hmm. One lesson. Wow. What kind of lesson we learned? Oh my God. There's so much lessons I've learned. Okay, oh. just, just snatch at one of them. Or share some of them, some lessons you've learned. All right, so I've learned um, the language in regards to interpretation. Mm -hmm. You're talking to a gun and they say, yes, 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 yes. And it's no, no, no. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so it's, like, it's, it's false. So, I'm like, don't say yes. And it's no, please. Stop doing that. So Ghanaians, and, and it's quite interesting. You're not the first person who said this. The Ghanaians can be agreeable, but doesn't mean that they agree. Right. Okay. And another one. <laughs> man, man. Ghanaians are afraid to say no, it seems like. Mm. Yeah, so them just what we call a lie. Them tell enough lie. Yeah, so it's not really like the lie, but they just they don't wanna they don't wanna tell you like disappoint you, I guess. Okay. You know what I mean? So And then in the end they do disappoint you. Yeah, in the so. end they do disappoint okay. you. Okay. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. Lessons <laughs> learned. And, lessons uh, learned. And and I like the frankness of, of your experience. So for me, uh, here are five takeouts from our conversation. And the first one for me is uh, that it's important that you brand, position, and package uh, your ideas. Absolutely. Uh, be it your culture, your music, and put it out there. Today, reggae music, something that started in the 60s, mm -hmm. is like known the whole world over. Uh, yeah. The United Nations recognizing reggae yes, music. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so it, it speaks volumes of how, if you package things properly, mm -hmm. it could go a long way. 100. Uh, number two is that you need systems, systems um, in terms of uh, how things are done um, yes. so that uh, it can be replicated, the success Absolute. can be replicated. Yes. Uh, the next thing I feel is important that you connect connect with people, mm -hmm. uh, period. Yes. Not, not necessarily the right people, but connect with people who will understand your vision, right. who will understand the culture and understand the message that you're selling. Yes. Uh, and then... Um, the fourth thing is focus on delivering an experience. Yes. Um, and not just, uh, you know, just, just a product. It has to be around an experience. And finally, that you should look at cross-border collaborations. That if we are, there's an African diaspora uh, mm -hmm. in every corner of the world. Yes. And if we're going to shine our light, it has to be shown everywhere Where? we are. Right. So we must be able to collaborate across borders. Absolutely. All right. Well. Donna Ray, thank you very much. And this is how I end the show. Uh, thank you all for listening. And uh, we're back next week uh, with more on the Executive Lounge. As always, I say, go forward, make rain, shalom, and back again next week. The news is up next with Komla Dum, and then Lexis Bill comes your way with Drive Time on Joy. But for now, this is how I end the show with my favorite, Hills and Valley, Bujabantan.